Hi, this is uh, Dan Barrett from the Greater Toronto Area Council. Uh, just giving a shout out to uh, Development and Peace. Uh, we're celebrating their 50th birthday uh, today. Uh, they currently have two initiatives uh, on the go up here. Um, uh, the first one is this uh, May Peace Be With Her. Uh, women play a vital role in conflict prevention and in building just, sustainable, and inclusive peace. Let's join our voices and ask the Canadian government to give women the resources they need in order to take their place at the heart of peace building. And uh, what they've got is they've got uh, a little uh, card here that um, you can send to the uh, Prime Minister. There's a, an online uh, version of it as well at uh, devp.org. And the card reads, uh, Dear Prime Minister, whereas the Canadian International Assistance Policy announced in June 2017 by the Minister of International Development and La Francophone E commits Canada to ensuring that women and girls have the opportunity to take active roles in establishing and maintaining peace in their countries. And whereas, despite this uh, commitment, Canada continues to maintain economic partnership with countries where female infants are murdered for not being male, where women earn less than men for the same job, or where they do not have the same rights, including the right to education or protection from rape, physical violence, and other forms of abuse. Whereas the government has stated its purpose for women in peace, yet there has been no increase to the international assistance budget, and instead the government has committed to increasing the military budget by 70% over 10 years. And whereas the government commits to women and women's organizations working to sustain peace can only be realized with concrete actions, including financial support, I'm calling on the Canadian government to go beyond words to act by supporting women and women's organizations who are working for peace and by adopting a tangible strategy with a precise time frame for reaching the goal of dedicated 0.7% of the gross national income to development assistance. And the second one up here is at the heart of the action, uh, Development and Peace, 50 Years of Solidarity. So in 2015, during the Development and Peace Create a Climate of Change campaign, thousands of Canadians committed to reducing their carbon footprint and asking the Government of Canada to take action against climate change and support communities in the Global South who are most affected by it. There are many ways to respond to climate change, and we believe that agriculture must be at the heart of the solution. Small family farms feed the world with less than one quarter of all farmland. We need to support an agricultural model that enables these stewards of the earth here at home and around the world to live in dignity and feed our communities in a way that respects our common home. So the message to the PM uh, they, they have on this one here is at COP21, Canada committed to investing $2.65 billion by 2020 to support peace in the global south who are severely affected by climate change. Agriculture must be at the heart of climate change solutions. How will Canada ensure that its international investments on climate change in the global south? By developing agricultural and environmental policies that recognize the essential role of small family farms in the struggle against climate change and hunger. By supporting access to land for small family farms, agroeconomy, and the development of local farmers markets. In by including the voices of small family farms through the movements that represent them in all consultation 
and decisions that affect them. So these two uh, initiatives, um, you know, it's an opportunity to uh, exercise your political rights and uh, let the government know how you feel so that you can make your voice matter more.